Now you said that uh, Hidden Pantera's uh, cover art is on the inside cover of the game? Yep, it is. Okay. Know, take it out for everybody. This game, uh, Until Dawn. Well, the game is done by a different studio. A lot of people are probably thinking Until Dawn's done by um, the same studio that did Heavy Rain and Beyond Two Souls because of the fact that the graphics in this game and the facial detail is very similar to Beyond Two Souls and Heavy Rain, and even the controls of the characters are very similar. But however, the company that did this game is um, Supermassive Games, and you know, I think the thing about this game that makes it so good, and it's, you know, really sad that Sony hasn't really done a whole lot of advertising for this game, because it, like for a lot of people that are out there that like um, very narrative games, such as um, Heavy Rain, um, Life is Strange, um, Beyond Two Souls, for people that like those narrative games where your actions basically, you know, depend on how the story is going to play out, then I really would suggest that you check this game out because the game is a great amount. You gotta remember that 80 slasher movies are always cheesy, so these characters basically fit make has a effect somewhere down the line. Now, it may not happen right away, but it will happen nonetheless. And that's what I really like about this game. Now, I'm sure a lot of people may find it, you know, not a whole lot of gameplay value due to the fact that in some way just for the fact that how they are. And I like the fact that, you know, every action has some sort of consequences. And even if you think you're making the smart one, it sometimes doesn't turn out 100% the way you're going to think it's going to turn out. So that's what I really liked about it. How about you? Oh yeah, I really enjoyed this game, and the interesting thing is we both played the game, we both had uh, different outcomes in the end, how many people survived, what happened in our, in mm -hmm. our gameplay, in my game, only two people survived, in your game, how many people survived? Well, first time, I think it was, uh, I think four, uh, because I'll be completely honest. I went for the fucking light switch as well. <laughs> <laughs> and you blew, I, I did, you blew yes, everyone up? I the one, um, one other person basically was already out of the cabin. So they they, they made it. And oh, I think there was one other person that made it. Yeah, the one with glasses. I can't remember his name, but he also made it. And then like everybody else died because I flicked that light switch on. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, the, another thing is that I think this game is very good at telling the individual that's playing it what to do more than, like, Beyond Two Souls was. Because as much as I like Beyond Two Souls, I did get a little bit frustrating with some of the quick times where you thought you had to basically press the analog stick in one direction but it was the opposite direction this game i felt like it was much more on spot with what direction you had to press it in or what buttons you had to press oh yeah like definitely i mean the way it uh uses the the new dual shock controller was actually really cool i used uh, the the motion control layout which i really liked where you would actually physically move the controller you would move it left to right it actually <laughs> i mean you went with the physical controls, and I, I went with the... Movie. I might do motion next time. I, 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 I do, man. I, I tend to play this game a couple more times before Metal Gear Solid 5 comes out. You were a little bit uh, like iffy on using the motion controls because you were afraid they wouldn't work that good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it makes it harder because you actually really have to think, like, are you going to go this way or are you going to go that way? Are you gonna go? And you have to... It's hard because you have to read what the outcome is before you click it. You're like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And plus on top of it, not just um, 80s slasher films are like in much of this. Like, as soon as basically that one scene where you have to choose between saving um, Josh or Ashley's character, like that one scene, 
uh, I was just like, wait a second, some fashions, because, like, even, like, when he basically goes over the monitor and talks to um, Hayden Panettiere's character, he basically says, I'll give you um 15-second head start to run, and, like, you, you know, you run, and I'm just throwing it out there, anybody that's seen a horror movie, if you hit underneath that bed, I'm sorry, I, I just, you know, basically... And, like, if you hit on it at the bed, that is probably the most stupidest thing you could ever freaking do. Because we've seen all different types of movies where, no matter what, if you hide underneath the bed, the person is going to find you. No matter what. The heart, and, the, the you know, heart. I just ran. I was just like, I'm running, I'm going to jump over this bed, I'm going to go down to the basement. There's a, part, to- there's a part where you do have to hide, though. Yeah, there there are a couple parts where you do have to hide. Yeah, you know, and yes, you, you know, it is good. Um, but you know, as I was saying, I went down to the basement, went through the door, and then I hid in the elevator shaft, which was the smart thing to do because no matter what, if you if you were gonna probably run, the killer probably would catch up to you. You know, because it's just the way that stuff works, and. You know, another thing that I really liked in the game was pretty much how well it fucks with you at the halfway point. Like, it really, like, curls the rug underneath you. And then, like, you're like, oh, man, that's that's what that is? Uh, I'm not quite too sure. And then something else happens, and then you're like, oh, okay, this is kind of sweet. Oh, I like how, like, um, like, in the game they tell you to freeze, and then sometimes... Sometimes you're thinking. Oh God. Sometimes you're thinking this is easy, but then, like you'll you'll flinch, and sometimes and then like someone will die. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That those scenes are the most intense part. Is the whole stay still, and then you're just like, and then all of a sudden, like, you screwed up and be like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, like uh, there was that guy with the flamethrower, and they were like, stay still, and I was like. And then the guy lost his head, and I was like, oh, man. And then, <laughs> Don't feel bad. That happened to me. Then there was another part where um, I was trying to save that the, the girl that uh, I thought had died, but actually had survived. You know, Believe it or not, but when I read an article with favorite deaths until, uh, until dawn, that was one of the top ones, was where she falls and just gets shot down. <laughs> did, you, did, your, did, did she die, survive? No. Nope. Okay. Well, basically, um, uh, when I flicked on the light switch like a dumbass. Oh, you flicked on the the light switch? Yeah. Uh, Jessica, the jock, and the one guy with glasses were, like, the only ones that lived, and I was just, like, (laughs) it was so funny because the jock, basically, Mm -hmm. like, when he brings up Everly's character, um... The police officers basically are like, well, the, you know, the people that are asking them questions basically are like, yeah, she, her body was recovered in the cabin. He's like, and then she's like, no, no. Josh starts crying? No, not Josh, the other Josh. Oh, oh okay. The other Josh. Mike? The, you mean Mike? No, not uh, Mike. Yeah, uh, the one that looked like Obama. Oh, yeah, that, oh, okay. The son of Obama. Yeah, yeah. Um, that guy. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, that guy was intense. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm actually really sad that he died in my playthrough because I was, I was trying to make him not die, but I didn't want him to go out as not a hero. And basically, has he, you know, did that, and I'm just like, yeah, you know, I'm not going to, you know, do that action. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean. I think. It, I think I probably would have made the same choice if I was playing blind, because I admit some of the choices I made, I wasn't 100% playing blind. I watched some of the playthroughs from IGN before the game came out, and not not like all the playthroughs, just... Kind of like a, a new wave, like, slash revive. Yeah, like, one of the um, influences that, like, when I watch a video about the creators of the game basically borrowed from was actually um, Stanley Kubik's The Shining. Oh, okay. Oh, we like how the um, the points of views of, like, how the camera... Josh's character goes, um, 
crazy. Well, I I believe that's the character's name. Yeah. I could, no, you know, no, that's that's right. Yeah. When Josh's character goes crazy, mm-hmm. he sees like the strangest stuff. I mean, he sees like his dead sister. Now I talked about how our actions were different and the immediate outcome was still the same. They both died. <laughs> all melted off and just like bizarre stuff i mean like it's it's just like really bizarre intense at times i mean this game is not everybody's cup of tea i i I fully admit it's not everybody's thing but however for people that want a game that has replay value to Mm -hmm. it in form of basically choosing different action play and have it play out according how you want this horror experience to go for, you know, I think they would get a little bit of enjoyment with it until dawn. I mean, it's definitely a game that you can whip out on Halloween and just basically have a bunch of your friends along and be like this, what should I do? Should I go investigate the noise? Should I not go investigate the noise? And I even like the fact that if you add um, this little feature, it tells you, like, how many people basically choose to do stuff, and then how many people choose to do nothing, how many people, you know, choose the opposite, you know, I, I just like that whole experience, it's very, very cool. And also the one thing that is different about this game than slasher movies is there's absolutely no na- nudity in it, where, oh, yeah, where in yeah, Outlast, uh, Outlast is full of nudity. Yeah, I, I do admit that was, that's one of the drawbacks of this game, this game but definitely should have had some nudity. Very gory it. though, very gory. Yeah, very gory. Um, definitely should have had some nudity. In it. <laughs> I mean, let's hope for a, if they do do a sequel. I, I don't know what hate. I don't know. Maybe Hayden Panchera signed like some contract of well, like no like, nudity. I don't know. We don't need to see like Hayden Panchera nude. We could see um, Jessica because yeah, like Jessica could have been nude or at least got almost halfway to the bra. You know, before what happens to her. You know. Yeah, I mean. But the, but it, they didn't do that. It's very disappointing because there's this scene where Jessica goes out and she's like, I'm going to have sex with this guy. And, and you're like, oh, it's going to go down. And then all of a sudden the killer comes in and he just grabs her. And you're just like, oh, come on. <laughs> come on. <laughs> yeah, and the whole game, you're just like, you are trying to get laid, like in the game. Like, you are getting, <laughs> yeah. you are getting the matches, you're getting the fireplace already, you're doing everything right. Oh, hey Jessica, here's your cell phone. Oh, it's my phone. I'm gonna go that out. That cell phone was the downfall. Of it. it should have gave you the option, option <laughs> to basically not give her the cell phone because you could just be like, yeah, if I'm gonna die, I want to die happy. Yeah, and and the whole in 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 the level, she's like, We're, I'm not gonna like do you until you find my cell phone. You find the damn cell phone. She goes out and she yells at the killer that she's gonna do. It's like, come kill me right now. You know what I mean? It's like, what is wrong with you? It's probably one of the most funny moments in the entire game. I, I think, <laughs> although the most scary, most one thing I didn't do, and that's just because it's a joke between me and you, but uh-huh. one thing I did not want to do is I, when they gave you the option to shoot the squirrel in the game, I was like, yeah, I can't do that. I'm I'm sorry. I don't want to piss off Samuel. Yeah, it, like it was a snow. It was a snowball, and I was like, I'm not throwing a snowball at a squirrel. That's just me. That was a that was a bird. That was uh, a bird. Oh, it was a bird. Oh. Yeah, the squirrel was on um, the barrel where the um, one guy. Would go. I thought that those birds were gonna attack me or something. <laughs> Dude, I was scared to shoot the freaking squirrel. I thought Samuel was gonna hug my fucking ass down. <laughs> And and also the um, there's a wolf part in it too where you can hurt the wolf or not hurt the wolf and if you don't hurt the wolf the wolf becomes your friend. Like he gets down there and he's like he's talking to the wolf and he's like hey come with me and the wolf's like Mm-mm, I'm not going down there <laughs> and Mike's just like why not <laughs> and he's just like hey see you on the flip side <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you wanted to get Hayden Panentera. Yeah, uh, I, I did. <laughs> yeah, and that that's what I wanted too, see, but we didn't we both didn't get that option. But if I could, I would have gone with that. 
Yeah. So hopefully, Although, um, Hayden Panettera's death in the game, if she dies at the cabin near the end of the game, that death is downright brutal if you've seen it on YouTube. Like, she gets her jaw completely ripped off. Wow. Yeah. But she can die several ways in the game, right? Oh, yeah. Like all characters can. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and there's lots of traps in it. I got that one trap on my fingers. Yeah, see, I didn't fall for that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, didn't, I didn't fall for that shit. I, 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 like I didn't, that I didn't that fall for the marijuana was, trap. I mean, you we, spoke great in a freaking horror movie of dead. Yeah, I mean, it, that's like an automatic death right there. Sex and weed. Uh, I mean, if you think about it, that all these characters, that the reason why you could maybe save all these characters in this game is due to the fact that they may all be virgins. That's right. I definitely have. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it follows scream logic in this game. You have to think about, like, your, uh, you know, like one of the scream characters, you know, like Sydney yeah, or yeah. whatever. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, th this game is much gorier than Scream, though, of course. I mean, mm -hmm. but, I mean... I, 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 well, I don't know if I would say it's much gorier than Scream, uh, well, but it, I would say it's pretty close to being about the equivalent of Scream here and there. Like the I original mean, one that is the goriest, where you get to see uh, Drew Barrymore's guts coming out? <laughs> like that kind of... <laughs> But yeah. even more gory than that, I think it takes it to the next level. And also, I think it's interesting in the game where you can uh, pick your fears. Like, you can either pick that you're scared oh, yeah. of scarecrows, you're scared of clowns, you're scared of gore, spiders. How about the fact that that guy's a complete dick that basically does that? Yeah, he... Yeah, he... I mean, and like, you're just picking your fears and he goes like, <coughs> Oh, did that startle you? Well, carry on, you're like... Dude, <laughs> I know, and and the funny part is he's not even real. He's a figment of imagination. Like yeah. I was wondering. That. <laughs> so, and, and at the end of the game, he's just like, "I can't help you." Bye. -bye. <laughs> well, he could have been real. He could have been real at one point. Oh, I'm sure that he was real. 